Hi, I'm Justin. Also, I hate the way my voice sounds, so if you can like do whatever Photoshop does to voices, make me sound awesome. And this is my lovely friend. The beauty in the eyes of the beholder. And it's just about getting into the seat of being the beholder. Haley. I don't think you have to be particularly perceptive. I just think you have to look up. This podcast is mostly just her telling me stories. If you expose yourself to the possibility that this might be really awkward, there, there could be something just really cool on the other side of it. She thinks that her life and way of looking at things are... Oh, I thought I was kind of waiting on you. I thought you were getting your stuff ready. You're waiting on me? Pretty normal. You got to edit out all the misinformation about the Amish. Maybe you can relate. I would like a chance to re-sing the Amish paradise. <laughs> if you want lighthearted stories... All right, you want to talk about goats? ...and stream of consciousness... I just woke up and needed some friends, and so I bought them. Then you're going to like the Sunny Side Up podcast. Sunny Side Up, Sunny Side Up, Sunny Side Up, Sunny Side Up. So, if you're at all like me, you may feel that you're living in a world that can be a bit overwhelming and confusing at times. I'm also a huge fan of podcasts, documentaries, docudramas, stories, and of just information in general. Between all of that and the social media and news, sometimes our brains can feel like they're on overload. Haley and I hope that this podcast can be something of an anecdote to all of that, like little jello shots of joy and distraction. None of it is too serious or really too informative. Mostly it's just two friends who have conversational chemistry talking about whatever enters the minds of relatively ADHD people. We hope you enjoy. Explore, but Atlanta in general has so much. Like, yeah. I know this is beginning to sound like tourist advertising. No, I mean, it's yeah, really con- true, tourist convention advertisements for yeah. Colorado, Florida, Atlanta. <laughs> but Atlanta in general, you have the history, you have diverse geography all around you so if you're an outdoorsy person you've got some options yeah yep yep but even the businesses and the culture and the sports and things that you have like it's it, there's mm-hmm. a pretty big draw y'all have a thriving movie industry here like y'all attract a lot i know we the do. what's the walking dead that's the that's one of the big ones yeah, that but was no, nearby but it, totally like that's kind of like one of the ones that gets a lot of play but um from what I understand, most of the Marvel uh, stuff was shot here because you know how it's done on stages. So in the last few years, I don't remember for how long now, but for the last however many years, more movies were shot in Atlanta than in Hollywood by by volume or dollar budget or however they, they gauge that. I remember looking that up. Um, so, yeah, anyways. Um, and I've actually... Uh, Years ago, I was doing uh, Uber rides. This was like, I guess, 26. I did I did Uber for like six months in like 2016, I think it was. Early 2016, maybe late. I think it was late 15 to early 16 for six months. Anyways, um, but yeah, I picked up a couple actors and I picked up a, quite a few like producers and um, a lot of like the grips and all the people sort of around the movie industry. Um, yeah, it's definitely... Like, if you're an actor, Atlanta's a pretty hopping place to be. Have you ever thought about being an extra in some of those? I mean, if you could be in the background of some of the Marvel movies, um, Big Flex. Big Flex. That would be so fun. It actually would be. I um, I thought about it, and, uh, yeah, I flirted with the idea, and, and as with most of the ideas that I flirt with uh, – I don't actually do them. Yeah. I procrastinate and Flirting, then Flirting, not courting. I know. I gotcha. God dang it. Well, it's not, it's not off the realm of possibilities. Yeah. I, we did the extras thing just for fun. Mississippi doesn't attract nearly as many movies, but we have a few. Mm-hmm. And um, Chadwick Boseman was starring in a film that was... Which movie? This was a, a James Brown movie biopic so there was a james brown movie that was being filmed in mississippi and we i did Side note like you get when when i was picking up people that were either like actors producers directors you know cameramen blah 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 blah. it's really interesting like they will because it's just like the two of you in a car or whatever like they'll give you the lowdown on like who are great to work with and who are like yeah douche bagels 
And Chadwick was one of those guys that was known as like that's he's an actual good dude. Like people I loved 100% him. I hundred percent believe yeah, that people loved him. Like he was. I remember I asked about a lot of people, um, and and most people are exactly who you want them to be. There was a few surprises of like people that you thought would be pretty cool and funny, and they're actually like not cool at all. But Chadwick was – he's the real deal. Or was, unfortunately. Um, you know, I know he's passed on to a better place. But I'm glad. I'm glad to have that confirmed the things I already knew in my heart. That's right. But he was – so I got – I filmed a scene with my brothers. It was like a concert scene. And oh, wow. so Chadwick Boseman came on stage and acted like he was James Brown in a concert. We were all dressed wow. in the 1960s outfits, <gasps> and it was an auditorium full of people. Dang. And our job was to stand on our feet and scream like we were at a James Brown concert. Yeah. So every time he would run out, sing a couple lines, jump into, like doing jump splits, wow. doing the whole dance, everything, and wow. then they would do cut and then take. Mm-hmm. Again, over and over. How many and over. times do you guys have to do that? For about four hours, just take after take after take. Are it was fantastic. Serious? He never slowed down. He never stopped. He gave as much energy with each effort wow. as he did from the beginning. And I'm like, I will never watch a movie the same way again yeah, if is this so is what work. it takes yeah. because it was incredible. Yeah. Wow. That's so. What a cool experience. It was so fun. I was at a James Brown concert. Yeah. And it. I was nowhere near the front. Like, my okay. outfit was the wrong year of the 60s to land me at the front. Yeah. One of my brothers ended up within the first couple of rows. And I think if you look hard enough, you might can see him in one of the – if you go frame by frame, you could probably find him find in the him audience. In okay, okay. Yeah, the other brother was somewhere kind of in the middle. But whenever I got home, I got an email, and they said, hey, you have kids. Could you come back and bring mm. your kids? And I'm like – Sure. Yeah. Well, this time, instead of showing up with a group of a couple hundred people in our costume and just kind of like being shepherded around, this time they said, meet us here at costuming at, I don't know, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. And they bust us to the location and they did our hair. They did our makeup. We got to do and they put the costumes on us like it was real. It was a real movie experience. That's so neat. It was really? super cool. And we go to the set, and um, it's a scene where Chadwick Boseman is acting like he's Santa Claus on the steps of his house, and he's giving out candy to the neighborhood kids, saying, Merry Christmas, oh, Merry yeah. Christmas, Merry Christmas, as we come one by one up his sidewalk. Yeah. And we had to do that take a couple of times. So, I mean. <gasps> Wait a minute. Okay, okay, okay. I think maybe, 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 maybe I did see a clip then oh. of you and Kate. Well, you wouldn't have seen us okay. in it because we, so we got to do the filming. We got to be there for it. But after we left, we realized that scene was added because, um, so the producer of that film also produced but the did help. You ta- did somebody take a video or something? Well, we took photos of okay. ourselves, okay. but the, um, the producer of that film, or maybe it was the director, also uh, did The Help, which was filmed oh, in Mississippi. Right. And Catherine Stockett wrote The Help, and and f- I f- maybe because they're friends or buddies or for whatever reason they wanted to put her children or her grandchildren. I don't know how old she is. Mm, mm. So there was somebody in her family that they they made this scene so they could put her kid in this film kind of just as a tribute to, mm. hey, we, were, we made that other film together, so come be a extra oh, in this one. Cool. So this scene was for her. The kid was in front of us, and then the children, well, she was two people in front of us, and the people behind her got called back later and said, we need a scene with James Brown's kids and y'all kind of fit the profile. Could Mm. y'all be in this subsequent scene? And therefore they had to cut the imaging Uh, right behind that kid's face uh, so that it didn't show the James Brown obviously wouldn't be saying Merry Christmas to his own children in the line of neighborhood kids. So they had to cut it right behind, which is why in that frame it zooms in so close to that one child's face. uh, They wanted to make sure they got her in the film, but it cut all of us out. Dang it, Jimmy. We were this close. It was not the Marvel film. You could have been in one of his Marvel movies. I wonder, I don't know where they filmed the first Black Panther. I don't either, but I'm betting, like, um, I mean, the guy. So when Micah proposed to Reagan, we, one of our, uh, one of our friends who had moved to Florida, speaking of Florida, um, sweet, sweet friend. She gave us a um, – she's like, hey, there's this other guy named Micah who I used to live with 
in this apartment complex, which had a gr- side note, great, amazing view of, of Atlanta at night. We'd go up on the roof, but she's like, hey, I know this guy named Micah, and if you hit him up, maybe he'll let you into the apartment complex and you guys can get up on the roof with the amazing view and then our Micah can propose to Reagan. So Aww. it was amazing. So I got to meet um, apartment Micah, who indeed like got us the pass and let us get up there and get in place so that Reagan, who thought that was just, we, they were just going to do her and Ollie and a couple of our people were just going to do pictures up there. And then behind this door, we all came bursting out and Micah ran over and proposed. It was amazing. Whatever. Okay. The point of the story is Micah is an art. Apartment Micah? Set, huh? Apartment Micah. Yes. Thank you. Apartment Micah works in the movie industry and he uh, does like set decorations and he's an artist. So you like paint walls. And I think he also was, did some carpentry, like built stuff, but mostly like painted a lot of the, the background stuff. And anyways, long before Black Panther 2 came out, when Micah was proposing, I'm hanging out with Micah and on his phone, he is showing me like all these amazing behind the scenes oh, things were so cool job. Oh, so cool. And I remember um I can say this now cuz you know the movie's out. So but he was he was showing me these two enormous water tanks and he's like there's going to be this scene in Black Panther 2 where they literally drain I don't I don't have a way to wrap my mind around how many zillions of gallons of water. They were going to drain like both of these in 2 minutes and it was just going to flood the streets. And I've still never seen Black Panther 2 at, at least at this point. But uh, anyways, super cool to see behind the scenes and all that. So I know at least that one was. But that's pretty – like from what I understand, back to like Atlanta being a mecca for the, a lot of big budget movies, there's at least bits and pieces or parts of a lot of big budget amazing movies like Black Panther that get shot here in Atlanta because we have the sound stages for it and the and the infrastructure and all the stuff. So, yeah. And the tax breaks. And the tax breaks, baby. Yeah. I think that's where Louisiana would – battle back and forth with Mississippi to try to get some of them. It was always tax breaks. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, goodness, of all the things, of all the things to cause us to lose out on this. Yeah. W- Wakanda Forever. That's the second one, right? Or is that Maybe the... it is. Yeah. I don't know if it's called Wakanda Forever or Black Panther 2. It said I... Yeah, once my kids moved out, like, they kind of got me into the Marvel Universe. The Marvel Universe <laughs> and I first could not stand the Marvel Universe. And then... They got me hooked, though. The first funny one was, what are the four little creatures? Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. That is funny. Oh, my gosh. And a killer soundtrack. Killer soundtrack. Funny. Like, good acting. Like, great writing. Like, the whole thing. I was like, okay, I can deal with this. Yeah. Like, Captain America and some of these others. Like, ugh. But, like, this I can deal with. This is really great. And uh, the other one was Deadpool. I mean, he is so funny, whatever his face is that did Deadpool, um, who now owns, like, well, he just sold Mint Mobile, and he, but he owns Wrexham. Side did note. he own Mint Mobile? Yes. Because yep. that was a one-point-something billion-dollar yep. transaction. Yes, sir. He sold it to, I think, T-Mobile. Um, what's his name? Our dear little Canadian friend. Ryan think. Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Thank you. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Dude, Wrexham, side note, if you're not into Wrexham, you, by the way, introduced us to Ted Lasso, one of the all-time great, like, heart, heartwarming, just amazing shows on Apple. Please go watch it. If you've not watched Ted Lasso, you are absolutely missing out on life. But if you want, like, the the real documentary version, in a sense, of Ted Lasso, it's not, a, like, a, a direct corollary by any stretch, but it's this incredible story of Ryan Reynolds and – I got to think of his name, but one of the actors on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, so he's not very – not nearly as well known. Um, and then he also is on Mythic Quest. Great guy. Anyways, the two of them teamed up and bought, like, one of the worst performing – Football clubs is what they call it. Okay. Wrexham yes. In in Wales. And it's this amazing story of this, you know, this little city in Wales and, you know, the town is just going to the poo-poo because it used to be like this manufacturing hub and then all the jobs left. kind of sounds like your classic like middle America c- city. 
and the only thing they care about is soccer, which they call football. Um, and their football club is just going into the toilet. And anyways, Ryan Reynolds and uh, this guy whose name escapes me at the moment step up and buy it. And so the first season of Wrexham, which is out now, um, is all about the story of them trying to turn this thing around. I don't want to give too much away. What platform? The Wrexham is on Hulu. Okay. And if you don't have Hulu, like either jump onto mine or pay the however much Don't listen, Hulu. (laughs) Hulu did not hear that. Do not do what Netflix is doing. (laughs) Password sharing the way they – no. You're not affected by networks. Password sharing clamped down recently. Uh-uh. No. Oh, they just, if you, you must log into the Wi Fi account of the original account holder, I think is what they're doing. Ooh. Yes. If not, you won't, you'll lose your service. So, fun. I uh, know. It's okay. already like one of the more expensive streaming packages and not as great movies. And now they're yep. kicking off all the people who were hanging around, but. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. Wrexham sounds good. Rexham Ryan amazing. Reynolds is intriguing because he is. he's, I mean, he invested, he's got the gin company. Yep. He's got the American something or other. Yeah. yeah. Aviation. A- aviation. Yeah. Yes. Aviation gin company. And then with the Mint Mobile, like, dude has invested wisely. wisely. That's incredible wealth. Incredible wealth. Like, generational wealth he created. And he's really not that old yet. Like, can you imagine, like, if he keeps up at this level for another, like, 20, 30 years? Or 40 years, or I don't know how old he is. I assume he's got to be in his 40s, I would think. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And, and he's just like in Deadpool, like his, he's always kind of got that sense of humor. I don't know. He just, he's just got such a fantastic sense of humor. Um, I love that sort of self deprecating. Um, yeah. There's just something about him. He's, he's, a, he's a universally beloved guy. Another one of those guys, by the way, when you talk to people that are in the industry, they're like, he is exactly what like, he seems the Ryan to Reynolds be. that you see is the Ryan Reynolds that you get. Like that's the, that's the real Ryan. In the high school, the high school kids are talking about who their celebrity crushes are and the yeah. boys and the girls unanimously support Ryan Reynolds. It's yeah. really kind of funny because e- like even the hetero guys oh, yeah. are like, if oh, I no. had to go gay, I'd go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's on my list. Yeah. Universal I, I, appeal. Yeah. He's a funny guy. Hello, lovely friends. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And it would mean the world if you would tell other people about this podcast and maybe even spam your social media accounts with just how much you're enjoying it. If you are, of course. Also, commenting and rating us on whatever platform you're downloading or streaming from is incredibly helpful to a little startup podcast like this one. On the other hand, if you are dissatisfied with your listening experience, please leave all of that hate on someone else's podcast, just maybe to confuse them a little bit, right? But most of all, we hope you keep looking up and looking for the sunny side of life.